Hey guys, Rollout here, and welcome back to Builder's Block. A relatively slow week for the most part, mostly just small projects with one significant build at the end, although I did a little science experiment that'll help you restore your sun-damaged Lego bricks, so stick around and you might learn a thing or two. If you like what we do here, consider supporting the show on Patreon. I post daily updates there, and I'm offering my creations for sale to anyone in the Patreon-exclusive Discord server, so go check it out. You can also support Builder's Block by liking this video and sharing it with your friends. With that said, let's get started. So I started off the week with something a little bit different. This is going to harken back to the Lego how-tos that I used to make. Uh, I got sick of looking at all of the disgusting, sun-damaged, discolored blue pieces in my collection, and I wanted to do something about it. Now, I'm not sure how well this shows up on camera. I was having trouble capturing this, but you can see that the piece on the far left, at the very least, is definitely not the color it is supposed to be. So, there is a way to fix this. There is a way to cure these bricks so that they're usable again. You're going to submerge them in hydrogen peroxide. You can see that I've set a piece of tin foil down on the table to reflect as much light back into the glass as possible because you are going to blast the hydrogen peroxide with a very strong UV light. Now, I've seen some people use a black light. I've heard mixed things about the effectiveness of that. I used this very strong daylight studio bulb, and it worked pretty well, so at the very least, I can vouch for that. Now, this isn't a quick process. All told, I let this cure for about 16 hours, uh, so you got to be patient. Also, uh, you will see that I put some white bricks in there at a certain point, but eventually, as sciencey science starts to happen in the glass, bubbles will form on the surface of the piece as the gross is purged from them or something, uh, and they will begin to float. So every once in a while, I would kind of mix up the glass and push them back down to the bottom just so that everything stayed submerged for as long as possible. Also worth noting, uh, bricks, like this one by two brick at the top here, uh, they just float, so I kept needing to uh, turn that over in the glass. So again, as many sides of it as possible were submerged for as long as possible. In the end, here are the blue bricks that I cured, and while some of them aren't perfect, you can see that they are noticeably much, much more vibrant than they were before, and at the very least, they are usable now, uh, so I am very happy about that. On the next day, I got all of the parts I needed to build Blade Hopper, my newest transformer, in the proper colors. Now, originally, I built him with translucent black windows for the front here. And then when I built him in studio, I kind of liked the look of these silver windows here and how they matched uh, the blades on the top and the bottom. But now that I've got him in hand, I don't really like it too much. I don't really like the swirly nature of flat silver in person. Uh, so I think I'm going to change it back to the translucent black. I think this looks a little bit better personally. So here is Blade Hopper, finally finished. Look forward to the showcase and the instructions for this coming soon. So last week I talked about more Zoids that I would like to at least attempt building. I'm thinking about trying to build an Elephander, a Blade Liger, and a Lightning Sykes. And so in preparation for that, I've built more of these little micro figures. So on the left is Sigma Stoller, the main pilot of the Elephander. And then I rebuilt Leon in the outfit he shows up in later when he actually pilots the Blade Liger. 
Kind of. This is a very tricky outfit to capture in four small plates. Uh, he's got a green shirt and then a white vest and then light blue shoulder pads. And then he wears dark blue pants. Now, that's a lot going on and I can only represent so much. I decided to go with the dark green for his shirt and then, because he's got so many lighter colors in his color scheme, instead of going with dark blue for the legs, I went with the lighter blue, just to kind of remind you of that. And it's okay, I'm not super happy with how this looks, but throw me a bone, it's, it's very difficult at this size uh, to make him look recognizable. But I think once he's standing next to a Blade Liger, uh, it'll be recognizable enough, probably. I also built the lightning team, so we have Jack Sisko in the middle, and then Chris and Kelly, the lightning Sykes sisters, on either side of him there. I also found this really cool technique for Berserk Fury here. I bought these pink electrical elements when I was putting together Leo from Promare because the fire effects that he summons are are mostly pink and blue. So I tried like weaving blue flame into this element and I didn't really like the results so I, I abandoned that. But I ended up with all of these pink elements after the fact. Uh, and so I've made use of them here because you can actually slide a sword through these pieces pieces and then link them together in the middle and it's very reminiscent of how Berserk Fury charges up his claw cannons. So I think this looks really really cool. And then since I've now got effect parts for Berserk Fury, I figured I'd see how Liger Zero looks with some trans yellow claws to represent the strike laser claw. And I think this looks really good as well. It was also an excuse just to show you Liger Zero in a strike laser claw pose because I haven't done that uh, since he's been more than a couple of legs. On the next day, I built this simple little snail. It's cute, it's elegant, and then I built as many snails as I could in as many colors as I could. So now I just have an army of snails. Here are all the parts you need to build one of these snails yourself, if you would also like an army of snails. But I guess I technically rebuilt this snail. Allow me to explain the inside joke. About 10 years ago, a long, long time ago, Starscreamer and I were chatting on Yahoo Messenger and watching Zoids. And in Zoids New Century Zero, the base of operations for the Blitz team is a giant snail Zoid. And at one point, Berserk Fury tries to blow it up. So we came up with this idea where Berserk Fury just hates snails, and so I built these little snails for my Lego Berserk Fury to terrorize. Now that I have a new Berserk Fury built, I, I rebuilt some of these snails for him to terrorize once again. And that's it. That's the joke. Anyway, it was about time that I start building the final member of the Blitz team, the Reynos. This is how far I got on the first day. It is missing legs and a tail, uh, but I think it looks pretty good so far. You can see that for the cannon on the chest, I used this one by one inkwell piece. The cannon on the chest is supposed to be multi-barreled, but I think that this element kind of captures the essence of it better than anything else. Uh, so I went with that. I also had planned on changing its color at some point. I started by building it in green, but I really wanted to see if I could make it teal or sand green later on. Unfortunately, some of these elements do not come in either of those colors, but I'm kind of okay with that because as I've been re-watching the show, I've noticed that Teal is probably too dark of a color, and sand green is too light of a color. Its color in the show is kind of close to this, just a little paler. And so, in a weird way, I think this might be my best option. 
or it's just growing on me. Either way, I, I like the way this looks, and I think I'm going to keep this green color. Anyway, here it is on the second day. I built the legs, I built the body up a little bit, I changed the wings slightly, and then I gave it a tail. Again, I think it looks great. It's a nice, chunky little zoid. It's very swooshable. Super fun. I really do like this design. I do plan on making the lightsaber rods in the wings green as well. Those do come in green. They're not very common, but they do exist. And then here is the wild eagle in flight. It is a pterodon, the pilot just calls himself the Wild Eagle, and when it's in flight like this, you can really see the pterodon fighter jet motif come through. Just a really cool design. Here is the Blitz team all together at last, and I think they scale pretty well with each other. Uh, the Reynos doesn't stand side by side with the other members all that often because it's a, a flying Zoid and it launches from the launch pad a little bit differently than the others, but looking where it comes up to on the launch pad in comparison to the other Zoids, I think this is about right. Mass-wise, I think it's supposed to be relatively similar to the Shadow Fox because I think those two Zoids were in the same size class. They were sold at the same price point, whereas the Gun Sniper was a little bit smaller and the Liger Zero was a little bit larger. Another thing worth mentioning, something I noticed while watching the show, is that the Shadow Fox is actually supposed to be a little bit taller than the Liger Zero at the top of the gun, just like this. On the wiki, it says that Liger Zero is significantly taller than the Shadow Fox, but I think that measurement is at the top of the head, because when they're sitting in the hangar, the Shadow Fox is definitely a little bit taller than Liger Zero. Again, just like this. You also might be able to notice that I changed Lena's hair color back to red because I'm very indecisive about that sort of thing, but at the same time, I also hate it, so I'm probably going to change it back. But for some reason, I thought I'd point it out anyway. I do want to mention that Zoids Wild, one of the more recent series, dropped on Netflix in the US last week. It's not the whole season, and they barely announced it whatsoever, so that's not exactly a great sign of confidence, but hey, you can watch at least one Zoid show in some official legal capacity now. So that's a start, I guess. Special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters. We got a few new ones in the last month, so thank you. But I also want to thank my leader class patrons, especially Valraven, Beyond the Brick, and Beta. Until next week's episode of The Lego Zoid Show, because that's kind of what this is starting to turn into, this has been Rollout, signing off.